They had hundreds and hundreds of tapes of professionals and non-professionals reading the John Long part, reading the Tracy Sue part, reading all of the parts. So it was a worldwide effort. That's why when Bernardo came to do the Last Emperor right following You're the Dragon, we've been friends for a long time, and he called me to ask me about casting. And I said, look, Bernardo, I have just spent a year going all over the world, interviewing every actor and every possibility. And you don't have a choice. He said, what do you mean? I, he said, who do I use? I said, John Lone. I said, you'll get along great. It will be perfect. And the movie was a great success. And John turned out to be wonderful to work with, and he and Mickey complimented each other beautifully. It was one of those magic combinations. And they gave me what I wanted. Because of my own life experience, I wanted the bad guy to be really attractive and seductive and handsome. And I wanted the good guy to be the opposite. So I wanted to confuse the good, the bad, and the ugly, you know? And I wanted you to kind of like the bad guy and not like the good guy and be forced to like the good guy finally because of what he does, not because he's wearing a white hat. He's wearing a white hat, but, you know, a lot of good guys are bastards and a lot of bad guys are charming. That's what I wanted. And they fit the bill. If I were... A violinist, John Long, would be like a Stradivarius. I could play any note on him. Whatever I needed, he gave me. He's one of those rare actors that he was just so easy to work with. He was one of the last people to be apprenticed to the old Peking Opera, where you sent the kid there, then he spent 10 years just learning every aspect of performance. He's a great singer. He's a, in fact, in Japan, he's a, quite a well-known singer. He's a great dancer. He's great at martial arts. He can do damn near anything. And he and Mickey together, Mickey being uh, an amateur fighter, knows how to throw a punch. And John, being a superb student of the Peking Opera, really knows how to take one. Because if the guy doesn't know how to take a punch, the punch can look like crap, can look very weak unless the guy knows how to take it. Taking is almost more important than throwing it. But in Mickey, I had a guy who knew how to throw a punch. So that looked good from that end. And on the other end, John knew how to take it. So the punches in that bathroom scene where they're fighting in the disco seem extremely violent and hard-hitting because they both complemented each other. Mickey could throw it, and John knew how to take it. And see, Mickey is a fighter by nature. I mean, the only reason Mickey's not a pro is he hates to train. His idea of training is smoking a cigarette, having a cup of cappuccino, espresso, and then going a couple of rounds in the ring. But on this movie, I was determined. I had an ex-Hells Angel guy forcing him to run on the beach two hours in Wilmington every day in the morning and box three rounds with him every day because I wanted that the physicality of the hands... Nothing's better than boxing. You know, you feel the punching, the, the physicality. Of, I wanted that in the character. You see, even the way he moves through rooms. It's the opposite of John. John insinuates himself into a crowd. Mickey just busts. He's like a slugger, a battler. You know, there's no finesse. Mickey's like Joe Frazier, and John is like Ali, you know, eloquent. But nevertheless, two fighters. One is just a little slipperier. Mickey is a true original. He really is an amazing.